<clears throat> Good afternoon. It's a great pleasure to be able to say to you, welcome to Cabal Vernet D, the new official Blood Bowl team. Hi, everyone. Our goblin technicians have been working night and day for the last year in order to deliver you the best quality service ever. Absolutely, Bob. We can. You blithering, snotling brain. You just can't get the staff these days. So, time for some Q&A, I guess. Yes, this is pre-recorded footage, which is why you can ask questions now. What do I think of the champion ladder now? Uh, well, Ed, I think that... Um, actually, policing concessions is really good. I think that the... Um, the point system, the formula behind the rankings needs some work. Needs to award winning a bit more relative to playing a lot and a lot and a lot um so so you know getting relatively close to asymptote at about 60 games rather than after 500 or something that would be good so i think i think next season we will see a much more sensible ranking formula which is good <clears throat> i think that uh having much fewer concessions there is great but I really don't like having to start over there. So not not playing my existing teams right now is, is a pity for me. It's a pity. I say that a lot, don't I? Um, and in um, if I make a team now uh, in, in the champion ladder, I get some good games. That's nice. But then having to start over two months from now is really, really sad for me. And less than two months, because the season has been going for a bit. I would much rather see the champion ladder as the main competitive ladder. Then I would then I would want to play there all the time. And now I'm like, yeah, I can play there for a bit. And then move back to Cole. Because I don't want to want to play one team all the time, and I really like high team value blah blah most. And seeing as how I play four or five um uh, scheduled matches per week, there isn't that much time left to really, really focus primarily on the champion ladder anyway. If they if they decrease the, the needed matches to really compete to somewhere along the lines of one per day, I might make one team there and really give it a shot. <clears throat> and funnily enough, high elves might actually be just the thing. Because, you know, you can start over if your if you're low team value uh, play goes bad. And if you can bring them to high team value, they become pretty decent. Is the TV difference limits considering journeyman? I think it does, actually, uh, John Flip. I think it does, but I'm not entirely sure. So, if they when they show you the team value of the respective teams, that does not include the journeyman. However... I don't know whether the uh, algorithm that determines the matchups also uh, ignores the journeyman. I've never seen a match that exceeded the maximum team value difference because of journeyman being added. Oh, it's Minza actually. Yeah, you're right, BZL Minza. So this is this is cool because the top three currently there are all viewers. Nice, and we have, so we have Muldripster, Shailmon, Minza, Duck, Sh Shawnee, Loopback, Bleeding Hippie, Sid, Trificic, Fash. Yeah, so of the top 13, I think there's three people I don't know. So, um, but of course the people who play most are also the people most interested in the stream, I guess. But yeah, nice. Hey there, Minza. Yep. Now I'm being matched up in Monday Night Something. Hey, didn't... Yeah, so I think I saw that Grindor and Strippin were actually doing a Monday Night thing, weren't they? I saw that on Twitter. Huh. Let's see if they're online at all. Because that would be interesting to get in on. 
exposure and all that. It's just open ladder. Okay, yeah, that's a pity. Um, I think if you make a ladder now, the 500k TV difference is mandatory anywhere. <laughs> no contest, friendly Richard. No contest. I'm just going to hit cancel and search again. Maybe something went wrong. Because I think I missed two of them in a row, which shouldn't be possible unless there's really no matchups in range. Because normally, I mean, I don't believe that there's not enough matchups to be made at all. Because this is kind of peak hours. And I think the algorithm works in such a way that if there's an odd number of coaches and one guy gets left out, then he's automatically prioritized for the next round. Hey there, Volklop. That arm is the Black Seed. There he is. I am. <laughs> nice jump flip. Uh, <laughs> I like that. I like that. That would mean there's only 77 level players left, though. That, that would be kind of sad. <laughs> no, Knorr is not retired. Knorr has an actual job. Hi there, Jeff. Newbie sort of questions, 1k TV Skaven, 1k Orc, you're playing a Skaven, you're kicking off. Uh, I would definitely be going rule of 5 there, Jeff. Definitely rule of 5. Um, the Orcs are not going to be pushing forward. They're not going to be trying to get a quick score on you. Um, and they are going to be trying to get a nice 3 die on a gutter or a hit on a uh, Storm Vermin if they can. So just keep your gutters and storm vermin safe and uh, don't bother to um, don't bother trying to protect the sides. That would be my advice. Asymmetrical could work. Yeah, I've never I've never really gotten into those. I guess I guess it kind of works. Yeah. <laughs> I actually told the students in my class today on how to give a good presentation. I actually told them if you have trouble pronouncing uh, scientific related English words, then do practice them because you don't want to be that student that, it goes, is that it goes into class and says, we analyze the data. Exactly. And in biology, that can happen. Yes, we do use probes and stuff. That is true. Yeah, no worries, Jeff. No worries. I mean, the orcs are probably going to be uh, caging up and uh, consolidating in the center for the first two turns or so, which means you don't really have anything to protect down the sides. Now, if it's if it's turn six or something, or even seven, then protecting the sides becomes very very worthwhile, because then they have to push, they have to get those blitzers into touchdown range, and your job is to prevent that. Whereas on turn one or on turn um, nine, your your job is basically to keep your players in one, in one piece. Um, Richard, I live in Amsterdam, actually. So that's the Netherlands. Ah, I see, Jeff. Well, a lot of really noobish coaches don't understand that preventing your advance may not be your priority. Um, actually, Amsterdam is also in Holland, yes, and Holland is in the Netherlands. And the Netherlands is in Europe. So yes. Holland and Netherlands are not technically the same thing, but most people treat it as such. So um, Holland is a part of the Netherlands, but it has become the uh, de facto name for the Netherlands uh, in most of the world. Which I'm fine with. Uh, I, I don't care. I mean, it's just words and stuff. Other people might care. Um, people who are not from Holland, the provinces, but who are from the Netherlands, they do object because they're like, well, I'm not a Hollander. So, um... And the provinces like Belgium. The provinces like, uh, there's uh, North Holland and South Holland. So, it's not one province, it's two. Hence the provinces. 
P but yeah. Are you sure you're not French, Monkey G? Uh that's a that's a good question, Starvin Darwin. I mean it refers to people from all of the Netherlands. And I guess etymologically it's related to Deutsch, which is German. Uh that's actually a very nice question, uh, Naviaris. Um so the the Netherlands has a drug problem, sure, most places do, you know, most, most Western countries have some kind of drug problem somewhere. Um but I think I think the the Dutch approach to uh drug regulation is a hell of a lot more effective than the USAN approach has been. Um, so I think it's it's very useful to to distinguish between you know uh, uh, hard drugs, uh, uh, cocaine, heroin, crystal meth on the one hand, and stuff like uh, marijuana on the other hand. <clears throat> I mean, if you if you think recreational marijuana use is a problem, then Actually, even then, the Netherlands doesn't have that much more of a problem than places where it's illegal, because there isn't that much more use here. There is, well, however... There is. Due to tourism. Due to tourism, yes. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Um, tourists have a drug problem in the Netherlands. <laughs> yeah, that's... Not... So if you... If you, if you, if, you um, if you check out numbers on uh, marijuana use in different countries than the Netherlands, where it's pseudo-legalized and has been for ages, uh, doesn't actually have that high rates of marijuana use. Exactly. Whereas in, in the US, the, the, the use of marijuana, at least among uh, you know uh, teenagers and early adolescents, is uh, higher, even though it's illegal and the prisons are full of people that should have really just been I don't know, stoned at home or something? I think so, uh, Naviaris. I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. And obviously less drug-related criminality. Less drug-related crime. I mean, there is less drug-related crime simply for the fact that you've decriminalized the use, which means all the users have become non-criminals, kind of by definition. But there is also a lot less... Um, crime scene around the trade and stuff um so there are there are issues so <clears throat> technically um marijuana isn't legalized in the Netherlands we have a weird kind of legal gray area which is called gedogen uh tolerating kind of like that and um it means that um possession of five grams or less is not penalized um and coffee shops which is what we call places that sell marijuana um are allowed to sell small amounts but you're not actually allowed to carry larger amounts or sell them even to coffee shops <laughs> which is kind of weird because it means that the the back door where the marijuana uh comes in is actually not legalized at all it's just, you know, uh, people uh, uh, put a blind eye to it. Turn a turn a blind eye. To, uh, is marijuana bad for the brain? Um, the jury isn't really out on that one yet. There are there are. <laughs> yes, don't put it in your brain. Um, marijuana is. Um, responsible in part for some uh, drug-induced psychoses, some increased risk of uh, schizophrenia. Um, it's um, l uh, heavy amounts of use can cause issues with uh, memory, but overall, pretty pretty mild effects it's nowhere near as dangerous for your health or for society as alcohol is 
Wow, drug questions, huh? Well, your audience. <laughs> well, that and the fact that I kind of know the brain and I live in Amsterdam, I guess it kind of makes sense. I used to be really, really, really inter interested in all of this stuff uh, when I was in high school. You know, back when I actually smoked pot a lot. Ah, so you don't know about the brain in high school and afterwards university all the rest. Yeah, no, no, no. I did it the other way around. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, it's kind of funny because um, drugs are, are pretty easy here. Hard drugs, some are also relatively easy. Uh, they're they're illegal, but you know not really uh, policed too strongly. And you know I I experimented with that stuff when I was fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and then I kind of knew what it was about, and I lost interest. Whereas uh, a lot of people who come from small towns and they go to university in Amsterdam, they go wild and they use a lot more drugs than I did as a kid, and. Uh, I never really did much drugs as a student anymore, or afterwards, because, you know, I had my, my experimental time with all of that. So, I'm not, I'm not promoting giving drugs to kids or anything, but I do think for my, for my personal experience, I've, um... <clears throat> I, I, I think it was good for me to kind of get that phase out of my system early. The optimum mix of tobacco and marijuana in a joint, uh, that really depends a hell of a lot on what kind of uh, stuff you're putting in there. I, um, I tend to, if I smoke, smoke, which is really not a lot anymore, uh, I tend to put uh, uh, hashish in there rather than um, pot itself. And... Um, well, then obviously the uh, the density of that is uh, a lot higher, which means you need to adjust for that. <clears throat> Although I have smoked a pure hashish joint once, uh, which I wouldn't recommend, in part because of logistics. Because the... Uh, the <laughs> it, it doesn't really stick together all that well, or if it does, then there's no air in there. And you kind of need air for burning, you know. Um... And also, if if you do crumb, make it into crumbs, then those get uh, you basically have this big burning lump, which then falls out, and it's a waste. So don't do that. I also think something is broken. Yes, I'm just gonna quit level two here, restart it, and see if that helps. Not that I don't like this talk. Actually, I I kind of do. Um, but you know, uh, it's kind of deceptive to say that this is a <laughs> Blubble 2 stream, when it's really not. Well, the current topic is waiting for Blubble 2 stream. Yeah, actually, ever since we started talking drugs, my viewer count increased by 10. <laughs> 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 I think we're onto something here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, don't, I, I don't remember ever really being high on pot and then smoking, uh, and then playing Blubble. How does... You don't remember... How does passive smoking of weed affect you? You mean sitting next to someone who smokes it? Barely. Did you make a study about that? Did I experiment with other soft drugs? Well, technically, in, under Dutch law, um, shrooms are soft drugs. So uh, those would be the uh, uh, psilocybin and psilocyne containing mushrooms. Uh, I have experimented with those as a kid. Yeah, sure, it makes you lazy. <laughs> it makes you uh, want to uh, <laughs> lay back and relax. Yeah, no surprises indeed. No, I haven't, I wouldn't say I've done them all. I, I haven't, uh, I, I never took cocaine or heroin or stuff like that. But um, I've done shrooms a couple of times, then had a really, really bad experience with that once, and that was enough to uh, turn me off of uh, serious... Uh, mind-altering drugs for probably <laughs> the rest of my life. <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, I don't react to, uh, to real tripping drugs too well. But I've done, uh, I've done X a couple of times. That was, that was good. Actually, that's, that's something I would definitely try again at some point.
But I think the last time for that was also before I went to college. Yeah. Yeah, shrooms do taste very, very bad. <clears throat> I mean, they're they're a poison, and your your tongue knows it. <laughs> hey there, Aurelian says, yeah. So what happened here was I was spinning, but level two wasn't working. So then I um uh w went into a Q and A, and in some somehow the Q and A turned to the topic of drugs, and so that apparently kind of caught on. The other popular Amsterdam thing, museums. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I've, I've been there on a boat uh, a couple of times. I've, I've walked through there a couple of times. I've never actually been to one. Nope. ADHD meds, huh? Yeah, I've had those at parties on occasion. We have a match. Yes. Sorry, drug talks are over. We have a match. All right, YouTube. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, remember to leave it a thumbs up at the bottom. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos, do check out the channel and hit subscribe on your top right.